Hey, welcome back to the channel, everybody. So you think you're ready for the structural game? You may want to think about flux core. The fact is that a lot of those traditional jobs done with stick welding are being replaced with that flux core application. Whether it be dual shield or self shield, you may want to think about getting that qualification. Today we're breaking it down step by step so you can walk into that test center with confidence and walk out with a pass. Keep in mind that this plate test is not tied to any specific certification or qualification. Today we're covering the 3G vertical test plate. That's done with flux core dual shield and that's the one with the backing bar. Now this isn't just any qualification, this might be the one that nails you that big job or that next big contract. You're gonna wanna test your machine settings as every power source runs a little bit different. Now understanding that relationship between wire feed speed and voltage is gonna be super critical. So if you're leaving settings to the day of the test, you may not be as ready as you think. Take the time to understand that relationship between wire feed speed and voltage. We're starting with two 3 8 of an inch thick mild steel plates beveled at 30 degrees on each side to create that 60 degree included angle. The root opening is quarter of an inch and we're using a quarter inch by two inch backing strip. The backing strip is tacked in four places about half of an inch long. This is gonna lock everything in place for welding. For this test, we're using an 045 diameter E71T-9 flux core wire running on direct current electrode positive. Gas flow is set to 35 CFH with a 75 to 25 argon to CO2 mix. Voltage is set to around 24 and a half volts and 350 to 375 wire feed speed. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, everybody. And if you're new to these test plates, check out my 1G flux core dual shield. That's usually where we start. Same plate configuration with that backing bar, just a more beginner position. Here you can see some basic safety equipment and hand tools for this weld. Now because of the higher amperage and voltage settings, I have my shield set to about a shade 11 and that's going to protect me from that bright light. Now the only difference with this position is I may do a little, a little side to side motion and that's just to wash the puddle up into that sidewall and to make sure that I'm catching and to distribute the heat a little bit. So I'm at about 350 wire feed and 24 volts. Let's have a look at that 3G plate. Now again this is vertical up so we're progressing from the bottom up and we want to make sure that we come in at half the included angle again for that root pass and we're just sort of holding that right in the center and we're washing into those two bevels nicely the whole way. I like to do a little side to side motion the whole way. But again, that progression is the exact same as kind of what we did before. So this is all stringer passes, one down the center, and then we're gonna go on one side, put a pass, another pass, and then we're gonna do another fill, and then we'll be able to cap it in either three or four passes. We're starting off with that root pass and we're going in dead center with that wire, maintaining a half to five eighths of an inch stick out. We're using a slight push angle between five and 10 degrees. I'm gonna do a slight side to side motion. This will wash the weld into the sidewalls of the groove. Other than that, we're just moving along nicely and consistent. Compared to some of the other welding wires, this is not a difficult weld to control. Most of the time, simply pushing the puddle straight up will work just fine. To clean between every pass, slag inclusions are one of the top reasons for failure in this test. Once that first pass is complete, once the root is done, we're going to examine this. It's not a bad idea to have your pick and a flashlight hanging around, and that's just to dig out any slag or any junk that's left into the toes of the weld. If your technique is good and you don't have any big overlap or any undercut, slag shouldn't trap. However, you never know what's going to happen. Make sure you dig all that stuff out. It is the number one reason why people fail this flux score test. All right, so as mentioned earlier, now that I've got my root pass in, my next line of attack is to put one pass up, blending into this bevel on the right hand side. And I'm going to put a second pass up on this side. And that's going to act as my fill and my hot pass, probably all in one. And then I'll be ready to cap. Next, we build up the joint with our fill passes. Now, depending on your WPS, your weld procedure, you may be allowed to weave. However, in my experience, you have better luck using stringer welds. 
This layer consists of two welds for us and each pass should overlap the previous one by half to two thirds or from center to center or crown to crown. With this said, you don't want to overdo it. You want to avoid excessive buildup. A common discontinuity or defect with flux core is worm tracks or wormholes and can sometimes be labeled as a cosmetic defect. So if you're unfamiliar with this and you want to learn more about it, check out my video on worm tracks. We did this with the Canadian Welding Bureau and it's listed under keep those lenses clean playlist. When it comes time to cap, you'll use that same overlapping technique. Keep in mind, this is the last layer and it's going to show. Take your time and plan each pass. This should be completed in two to four welds. This one here, we're doing it in three passes. Since I've still got this thing up here, I've got my cam gauge. Once again, we're going to check it for height. Always make sure that your cam gauge is calibrated. I'm at about a sixteenth, so we can check it in a few different spots. The weld is now ready for destructive testing, bend, break, macro etch, depending on your standard. Now here's a few quick tips to avoid any unwanted failures. Don't rush your passes. Take the time and plan every move. Prepare yourself and get comfortable for this. Always clean that slag completely. Get yourself a flashlight, a little pick, and dig any of that unwanted slag out of the way. Watch your heat input. Too hot and you'll get burned through. Too cold and you'll risk lack of fusion. You want to keep a consistent travel speed and remind yourself of those basic angles. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed this. Please subscribe to the channel, like so we can continue doing great content like this, and drop me a comment. Let me know what you like or what we could do different and what you would like to see in the future. So as always, keep those lenses clean and we'll catch you on the next one.